YouTube. Hopefully you enjoyed Thanksgiving. Uh, so we're actually going to be talking about breeding bearded dragons today. Um, and we're not going to go into genes just yet. First, I want to talk about if you should actually get into breeding bearded dragons. So there's a lot that goes into breeding, uh, upkeep, feeding, making sure you have good homes for your uh, the babies that you're selling. A lot of people always wonder if they should breed their bearded dragon. The answer is no. Uh, you should not breed any bearded dragon unless you've done your research. And that's your first step is making sure you do your enough research about breeding to understand what goes into breeding, uh, what you need to learn as far as genetics, as far as, as far as availability, pricing. And also, you need to understand that there's a lot more than just putting the bearded dragons together and letting them go at it. I mean, there's a lot more to it. And that's what this video is going to be about. So hopefully you get all the information you can get out of it. This video is going to go into the nitty gritty about breeding. And hopefully you enjoy it. Let's get going. As I show off this bearded dragon here, I just want to mention that genetics play a big part in if you should breed or not. Um, so, for example, if you got a bearded dragon and you're like, well, let me get another bearded dragon and have a companion. And eventually I want to breed him. If that's where you're going, then you should not probably be breeding. In most of these scenarios, I will say you should not be breeding. How does someone get into breeding, you may ask. So for me, it was more of, I worked at a pet store, and the pet store was not able to get a lot of the nicer morphs. So therefore, I decided I was going to breed so I could provide nicer morphs to people in my community. At this time, there is so many more possibilities as far as what could be produced as there was 12 years ago when I first started. So if you think you should be breeding, just the first thing you should do is go and look at what is available. So if you go on Morph Market right now, you will notice that there are a lot of bearded dragons available and that's just the tip of the iceberg. There's bearded dragons that are available that are at pet stores that aren't posted on Morph Market. There's people that aren't aware that Morph Market exists and just post on uh, social media, then there's also people that have their own websites who don't use Morph Market. So you're probably looking at two or 3,000 bearded dragons out there at any given moment that are available for purchase. So the question you should be asking if you want to become a breeder, are you going to be able to compete with the market? If there's 3,000 bearded dragons that are available right now, can you produce quality bearded dragons that surpass what is available and that can actually sell because of the quality that you're producing. If the answer is no, you should not be breeding. This guy is my Hypo Wiro. Wiro is zero and Wiblets both visually being displayed on the animal. Um, and it just makes an even wider, crisper dragon. There's no ethical way for you to produce a Wiro from a visual Wiro, so... It would be about two or three generations before you can actually produce this animal. And by that time, you might be looking at four, five hundred dollars instead of six to eight hundred dollars. The other thing is, is that are you willing to invest your time and money for two to four years, maybe six years before you can produce that four or five hundred dollar dragon? If the answer is no, you should not be breeding bearded dragons. The market plays a big role in if you should be breeding or not. This is a Hypo Wiblets. When I first heard of Wiblets, I don't know, maybe six or eight years ago, they were worth anywhere from six to a thousand dollars, 600 to a thousand dollars. Nowadays, you can't find a, a Wiblets that's just a normal Wiblets for more than 300 bucks. They're about half the value, if not a third of the value of what they used to be because of availability. So if you think, oh, I'm going to produce an, a bearded dragon because it's so awesome, just know that there's other people producing that same bearded dragon, so it's going to be harder for you to sell it. This is the closest uh, to a normal as I can find. This is actually my girl Peach. She is a uh, hypo het trans het wiblets. But besides that, she is practically a normal bearded dragon. Uh, she doesn't have much color, and the fact that she's a hypo doesn't really do much to her coloration. So, this girl here, 
as a baby would have been worth $150 because of her genetics. If she was just a normal, she would be worth about $50 to $75. If you want to get into breeding, just understand that every female can lay anywhere from a, the smallest clutch I've ever had that was an actual clutch, not just a one-off egg, was about 16 eggs. And the most I've had was about 28 eggs. They can have up to 30-something eggs. I've seen up to like 37, 36. Never have I experienced that, but I know it can happen. Do you want to have 36 babies that are worth 50 to $75? Bearded dragons can eat a lot of bugs. They are not considered a low-maintenance reptile. They are medium-maintenance some of them, if you get any, if you rescue a bearded dragon and has health issues, you're looking at a high maintenance bearded dragon. But for the most part, they're a medium maintenance reptile. When it comes to how much they eat, a bearded dragon can eat a lot of bugs if you allow them to, but they shouldn't eat more than about five to ten bugs in a meal. And I usually don't feel, feed them more than three times a day. So you're looking at 15 to 30 bugs, adequate size bugs, not oversized not undersized uh, so adequate sized bugs usually it'll be the space between their eyeballs on the top of their head so this girl here is eating mediums but adequate sized bugs is what they should be eating as far as the value of those bugs so I only feed dubia roaches so they are more costly than crickets but for me it's more of the sense of producing animals that are quality and also providing them healthy meals so crickets carry more parasites than roaches do and i would prefer not to produce not to sell animals that are high in parasite counts so i feed dubia roaches so you're looking at five to ten bugs every meal 15 to 30 bugs every day if you're buying smalls you can get a thousand smalls for about 50 bucks if you're finding a good vendor um so if you think about let's say on average 20 bearded dragons out of each clutch females can lay up to three clutches i've seen them lay up to six clutches uh but on average they lay about three clutches so at any given moment let's say you have a clutch of 20 they're eating 30 bugs every day so that's about 600 bugs a day that you're having to feed if you're getting a thousand roaches for fifty dollars, you're looking at a lot of money every single day. You should not be selling your bearded dragon until it's at least eight to ten grams of weight and also healthy and also growing. I usually do not sell my bearded dragons until they've had at least three sheds. Sometimes depending on how big they were when they were hatched, also plays a part. Uh, so if they're 10 grams, but they've only had two sheds and I'll, I'll, I'll start selling them at that size. Uh, I usually don't advertise for sale until they're six grams and I don't ship them out until they're eight to 10 grams of weight. So you're looking at at least six to eight weeks. If you're feeding them adequate meals, not over, not overfeeding six to eight weeks before you can sell your first bearded dragon. Now think about how much that is in terms of how much you have spent in just bugs. That's not counting the greens. That's not counting the energy bills that you're going to have to be paying for all the lighting. That's not counting all the space that you've taken up, all the enclosures that you've had to buy for those babies to take care of them. So before you breed any bearded dragon, think about if you have all the necessities to make sure that you can properly take care of those babies. Now, this guy, if you were to breed to a red female and you had 20 red babies that you could sell for 200 bucks, then you're looking at $4,000 that you can make off 20 red babies that you can sell at 200 bucks on average. Some a little bit more, some a little bit less, but around 200 bucks. Now, if you've made $4,000, that sounds great. Off one clutch. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. Well, what about the $6,000 that you just had to pay for feeding those 20 baby bearded dragons? So if anything, you just lost $2,000 off just one pairing. And that is where it gets into, I should not be breeding my bearded dragon. If you cannot take the loss, do not breed your bearded dragons. Because there will be several losses 
the majority of the hobby is a loss. Very few people make money off the hobby unless they're producing very high quality stuff, very one off stuff like paradoxes, uh, weiros, stuff that has a lot of recessive genes, stuff that's unique. That's where it becomes a little bit pricier. But for stuff that everything that everyone else is producing, it's hard to actually make good money off of it. So should you breed your bearded dragon? My answer is no. The next thing to worry about is, do you have the space needed for maintaining a breeding group of bearded dragons? I have about 20 bearded dragons, and that is just my breeders. They take up about 200 square feet of space, and that's not including the baby rack that takes up probably another 50 to 100 square feet of space. A whole bedroom is probably what you're going to need to breed your bearded dragons. Do you have a whole extra bedroom to maintain and keep all of your bearded dragons? If you do not, the answer is you should not be breeding your bearded dragons. So yes, I breed bearded dragons because I enjoy the experience. If that's what you're looking for, if you can afford it, then go for it. If you made it this far, I appreciate it. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, hit that notification bell. Peace.